Hello, today I wanted to make a really quick video showing you how to integrate uh, the API for ChatGPT, or what it really is, is the OpenAI text completion uh, endpoint for the API um, into your Node app here, in any of your Node apps, and it should it's really simple, so it should be a really quick video, and I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing we're gonna do is go actually to Google Chrome, or whatever your web browser is, and go to openai.com slash API, and log in. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in with Google and I'll be right back when I'm logged in. All right, so I'm logged in now. So I'm gonna go ahead and head to the right corner here, the top right corner, and go down and bring the drop down menu of your options here and click view API keys. Now you can see I already have three API keys here and you can't see them here, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one and I'm showing this on camera because I'm gonna go ahead and delete it right after. Uh, so it's no longer gonna be valid once the video is live. Just make sure you don't share your secret keys with anybody. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to start a new Node app. So I'm gonna do npm init, and just run through all this, perfect. I'm gonna start a new index.js app here, or index.js file. And I'm also going to yarn add OpenAI, just like so. So that, that way you can install the OpenAI package. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the console. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to import that OpenAI package here. So what I'm gonna do for this specific uh, tutorial is show you just this file and show you how to use the API and you can integrate that into your app however you'd like. So I'm gonna first set const and then brackets here and inside the brackets, I'm gonna pull out configuration and open AI API like so is equal to require open AI, not open AI API, open AI like so. Let me go ahead and save that. And then I'm gonna come down to new long line and I'm gonna set the config. Um, you can do whatever variable name you want here and do new configuration, just like GitHub Copilot suggests. And then I'm gonna set a new object here, come down to new line and I'm gonna put our API key in there. So again, this is one that I'm going to delete right after the video, so you're gonna have to create your own, do not share it with anybody. And I'm going to go ahead and post the source code for this video uh, on GitHub, but this will not be included in the source code. So make sure if you use that, you go ahead and create your own API key and plug it in there. Perfect, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a new open AI here. So that's just an open AI instance from that initiator, from that, uh, that uh, open AI variable here I pulled out, the constructor, open AI, and then I'm gonna feed through config as a parameter, like so. So now that we've created a new open AI instance here, I'm gonna come down and I'm actually gonna start an async function. Uh, this way we can await, because I prefer to use async await versus promises and callbacks. So I'm gonna go ahead and set, uh, say run prompt, that's totally fine, does not matter. This is again just for uh, display purposes here. So go ahead and set this async function. And inside here, we're gonna go ahead and set a prompt. And this is gonna be set to whatever we want. So I'm gonna show you a few different options for how you might want to structure prompts to get specific uh, structured data out of it. So the first thing we're gonna do is just say, tell me a joke about a cat eating pasta. Cause I like cats and pasta. So I'm going to save that, come down to a new line, and you can do const response is fine. And we're going to set that equal to await open AI dot create completion, like so. And go ahead and pass in another object into here. So it's a config for this, uh, or some options for this create completion. So there's a few options that we're going to want to pass through for sure that you're going to be required to. And one of those is going to be model. So the model we're gonna pass through is text DaVinci 003. So that's the current, the, as of the making of this video, as of the making of this video, that's the most up-to-date model. It's the most advanced model and the most expensive. Uh, there's, you get some free generations and this is still super cheap. However, um, it is more expensive than some of the less advanced models. Now I'll go ahead and go down to the next line and feed in the prompt, which we're going to be the prompt variable we set up above. And then the last one that I actually, actually there's two more that I like to do. So I like to do max tokens. 
So this uh, basically allows you to set what you want the maximum response length to be. So you get a certain number of tokens. Uh, tokens cost a certain amount on the OpenAI website. So per thousand tokens, depending on the model, uh, you may cost a few cents. And so uh, you can set the max tokens for the response. Uh, so basically limiting the length and the complexity of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 2048. Um, it's about half a cent, I think, per response of that length, but it's unlikely to actually get to that length. And this is, uh, again, the most complex and expensive model. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that. And 2048 is the max uh, tokens that you're allowed to have set for the max tokens. Otherwise, it'll give you an error. So the next one, uh, the last uh, option here I like to set is temperature. And I like to set that to one, especially for creative things. It takes more risks. So uh, a lower temperature means that the, the AI is going to take less risks and be more deterministic in their responses. And with a higher temperature, it's going to go ahead and reach for some unlikely answers and take some more risks. And you can read more about that in the documentation, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. So go ahead and save that now. And we're gonna go ahead and console log the response. So GitHub Copilot actually has it right here. Um, this is what the response you're looking for would get is where you'd find it, but I'm actually just going to console log response.data to show you what that looks like. So go ahead and run node index.js. Oh, I gotta run the function here, run prompt, and go ahead and run that again. And there you can see unrecognized, uh, let's see what, happened here what's the max to is it max underscore tokens that's the issue so I'll go ahead and save that and rerun it and there we are so as you can see we got uh, a few a uh, few parameters here in the response ID object created and the model and then you get your choices array which as expected we only get one and you get your question and your and, <laughs> and your answer here um, so this is your response that was generated and then you get your usage. So you get the amount of tokens that you spent in the prompt and the amount of tokens that came back in the completion. So this cost almost nothing. This is super, super cheap. And again, you get a number of tokens. I'm not sure what it is um, for each for each model for free or, or something along those lines. Again, you can check the pricing page to see uh, what what is up with that, those options. Perfect. So. That's really um, the gist of it for the simple uh, completion, text completion here. And you can implement this wherever you want. It's super simple. The next thing that I'm gonna show you, actually let's go ahead and log this uh, choices correctly and go and run it just to make sure we did that correctly. Perfect, so you can see here, this is the, uh, this is, <laughs> this is the text that we were expecting. And I've got a little bit of a funny joke there. So the next thing I'm gonna do, and the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to ask for, say, JSON back and get um, your responses in a JSON formatted uh, response. And again, you can play around with this and get it in however, whatever response you actually want. So I'm gonna switch to these back ticks here instead of quotation marks, just so it's easier to format this. And I'm gonna say, uh, write me a joke a uh, joke about a cat, about a cat and a bowl of pasta. And then I'm gonna tell it to return response in uh, parsable JSON format. I'm gonna say in the following parsable JSON format. And then I'll give it an example here. So I'll give it an object and I'll say Q and give it question. And remember, you gotta give it the exact format because it will respond in that exact format most of the time. And then I'll let, let it finish up here with GIF Copilot, answer, answer. And it won't 100% of the time work. It'll probably work, this, will, this one particularly will work almost all the time. If you have more complex structures, it will work still most of the time, 90, 95% maybe, um, depending on how well you structured, structured your prompt. So what I've done to get around that extra five, 10% when it doesn't work is I've checked for an error in parsing the JSON. And then if I do receive an error, I just run 
the prompt again, and I typically get a response that is correct back. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this again, and we should see uh, a format that looks like parsable JSON. And there, there it is. That looks like some parsable JSON to me. So now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this console log, and let's say const uh, parsable JSON response, and go ahead and get rid of that parenthesis at the end. I'm going to go ahead and parse response equals JSON to parse parsable JSON response. That's perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and say console.log. And we're going to say question and add space. And let's see, parse response.q, perfect. And parse response.a for the answer, just like so. So you can get your JSON in the correct format. Let's see, did I run? Yeah, there it is. Question, why did the cat go to the restaurant? Answer, because it was feeling postivational, postivational. Anyway, um, since the temperature was so high, it gives me some weird jokes and ones that may not make a lot of sense, but it does its best. Uh, so that is basically the tutorial, and that's how you get the JSON response out that you're looking for. So I hope this video helped. If it did, please leave a like and subscribe.